You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with thanks to Wexford Insurances. Wexford Insurances. More information at wexfordinsurance.com. I'm now joined by Aidan Shine, Assistant CEO of Southeast Business and Innovation Centre. Good morning, Aidan. Morning, Carl. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about the background to CBIC, please? Well, CBIC, um, it's shorthand for the Southeast Business and Innovation Centre. So we're known as Southeast BIC uh, for short because it's a bit of a mouthful with the Business Innovation Centre. And we're, we're established in 1995 to su- support the generation of enterprises in the Southeast region. So we're a non-for-profit organisation, a registered charity, and our role in life in common with the other BICs in Ireland, in Cork, in Dublin, in Galway, is to support the generation of enterprises in a particular region. So we look after the Southeast region. What services do you provide? It's a wide range of services, but we try to group them into three main groups of services. Uh, So the first group would be looking at the concept development. So if somebody's coming in with a particular idea, we would look at them at, at the feasibility of that idea. And in terms of feasibility, we mean, can this be done? What needs to be done to achieve it? Has it been done before? So a lot of our clients, when talking to them after we'd engage with them, would say the BIC is a good sounding board. They're a good place to talk to initially about a particular idea. So we would, that's the first kind of phase, looking, is this actually feasible? Because with the greatest respect in the world, a lot of people, when they have a business idea, they think they're the first to have come up with that idea. But invariably, it's been thought of before. So we would help them through that particular process. And then we'd move along to the main body of support we provide is in terms of the business planning services that we would provide. So we provide financial planning, sales and marketing advice. Basically, what you're trying to do is because a lot of entrepreneurs operate on their own, we try to fill in the gaps of the team. So my background would be financial. So I give maybe uh, financial mentoring to a particular client. The idea, the end product of that particular service then is a business plan, an investor ready business plan. The third sector of services then is the investment side of things. So we would engage with enterprise boards, Enterprise Ireland in particular, business angels in in securing uh, the necessary funding in order to fund a particular business plan. Between all those three then there are other uh, services that we provide, networking opportunities. Uh, We have an in-house incubation centre. It's a small incubation centre that we can incubate up to six companies at a time. So we try to cover from A to Z of, of business development. Is there any cost associated with access to your services by business owners? No, there isn't. We, we are funded by the Department of Enterprise and Innovation through Enterprise Ireland. So no, we don't, we don't charge for our services. As I say, we're not for profit. Our role in life is to promote enterprise in the South East. Over the past few weeks, Aidan, I have had representatives on the show from both the Enterprise Board in Wexford and also from Wexford Local Development. How does your organisation differ from both of those? The first thing I'd say is that we work very, very closely with all the enterprise support agencies that exist. So we work very closely with the enterprise boards, leader groups, uh, Enterprise Ireland, as I say, in particular. Where we would fit in typically is that, for example, at a local level, your enterprise board is typically your first support to call. So you'd go into your enterprise board. They have funding available for startups and they can provide mentors. At the other end of the spectrum, once you go beyond 10 employees and you start to export and your turnover is, is approaching a million plus, you may become an Enterprise Ireland client. So we would fit the gap in between those two. So there's an awful lot of companies that are too big for Enterprise Board and maybe too small for EI. So we're tasked by EI, for example, to go out and find those companies that are potential, high potential startups for Enterprise Ireland. Because ultimately, for the region, we need to grow our own uh, scalable businesses. So we would fit in between the Enterprise Boards and EI, while at the same time working in parallel with them. So often an Enterprise Ireland client or an Enterprise Board client would work with the BIC as well. So Aidan, CBIC acts as a feeder into Enterprise Ireland and it helps Enterprise Board clients prepare for the relevant application process that they would need to go through in order to become, let's say, a high potential startup business with Enterprise Ireland. Yeah, it works kind of up and down and in between between all of them. There's no one place we get clients from. So we could get client referrals from Enterprise Ireland, from an Enterprise Board. We could also refer clients to Enterprise Boards or to Enterprise Ireland. In getting companies ready for HBSU status, high potential startup status, it's an intensive process. Um, It's ensuring that they have an investor-grade business plan, the correct team in place, so that when they do go to Enterprise Ireland, that they're ready to, to receive the funding that they need. The services provided by CBIC are more on the advice side, more so than the financial side. Is that correct? Well, in terms of financial, in that we don't provide any funding. That is, when the business innovation centres were established in the early 80s by the European Commission in Europe, and the philosophy of the BIC has always been uh, we don't provide funding. The philosophy is if a business idea is good enough, it will attract 
either private or sector funding to run the business. So it means that we don't have to deal with the question of what funding is available for my business. We're immediately focused on the business and the feasibility of the business. And then we tap into the enterprise board to leader, Enterprise Ireland, banks, private investors to get the funding needed. So that leads me on to my next question in relation to business angels. You mentioned it a few minutes ago. Can you explain to our listeners exactly what is a business angel? A business angel is a private investor, uh, typically has industry experience and has money to invest in businesses. It's something that has developed in Ireland only recently on a formal basis. It's a well-used method of funding early stage startups. So typically, our business angel network uh, at the moment is about 300 investors nationally. and We manage the Southeast uh, Business Angel Partnership Network uh, covering the Southeast region and our, the other BICs in their regions manage their own networks. So these are looking for exciting companies to invest in. What type of companies have these Halo investors invested in over the past 12 months from your experience? What these investors are looking for is scalability. The actual sectors are pretty broad. Um, anything, you know, software, technology, food, anything really is covered. But what angel investors are interested in, obviously, is return, but that there's a growing market and there's potential in the business. Talk us through the process. Let's say, for instance, if they were interested in going and speaking to one of these Halo business angels, uh, what process would they have to go through? Well, the process as managed by the BIC is that we have the network of angels signed up. And the angels have told us where they want to invest geographically or what uh, industry they want to invest in, typically what amount they want to invest in. We meet with client companies who are looking for investment. So they sign up. It's a formal sign up process outlining what the plan is for the business. We would then work intensively with them to make sure their, their business plan is investor ready. We would help them with their pitch presentation to make to angels. We would assist them with summarizing their business plan down to a one page investment document. And then we match them with the potential angels. And then we, we, we're like um, a marriage board. Broker. So we stand back, put them together in a room, and hopefully something comes out of it. How long typically would it take for all of that to happen? We always try to manage people's expectations. Our experience is telling us between engaging with us day one to getting the money in the bank could take as long as six months. That's a very short length of time. It's short enough, but it's, it's an intensive enough period because the side of the bargain for us with the angels is that we're giving them vetted, investor-ready businesses. So that's why the angels are signing up to our network because we, they know we will work intensively in, in preparing these companies for investment. And what's your success rate in relation to securing funding for clients? In the southeast, uh, two and a half million has been invested in nine companies. So we've been quietly getting on with the Business Angel Network. It's there it exists, and it definitely is uh, funding businesses. I think 31 million in, in four years is, is something to be applauded, I think. Especially with the times we're in, I would absolutely agree. How can people find out more about the Halo Business Angels? They can go on to the Business Angels website, www.businessangels.ie. Have you seen an increase in the demand for your own range of services over the past 12 or 18 months? We have indeed. What, what we're seeing on, on two fronts is that um, there is a lot of people out there with ideas. So a lot of what I spoke about earlier about the sounding board, that has become a very important part of, of what we're doing because there's a lot of people maybe laid off uh, looking for alternative employment and they're coming up with ideas. So it's, it's vetting those people or, or vetting their idea. We're also working closely with the, the likes of uh, the county and city enterprise boards in helping some of their clients to consolidate what they have or to look at uh, new opportunities. So for example, we're working with the Kilkenny Enterprise Board at the moment on a pilot program with five of their clients called the Fast Track to High Growth. And that's working intensively with five of their clients, looking at their business and looking at potential opportunities. And it's something we're hoping to, to then, once the pilot is finished in March, to roll out through the rest of the region. Tell me about the team behind CBIC. What background and qualifications have yourself and your own team got? It's a small core of people. There's five full-time employees. And we're all from a private sector background and we bring a wide variety of private sector experience to bear on, on all the projects we deal with. So, for example, the goal is to, as I said before, to kind of substitute the team that a startup would need. So you can't, a startup typically can't afford to hire all the people it needs. So we would fill in there and provide the services and the mentoring. So my background is finance, so I provide financial planning services. Rosemary is our sales and marketing uh, uh, mentor or consultant and she again would have an input there carol is our um, it technologist uh, michael maddock our ceo uh, brings a wealth of experience in in strategy and finance as well denise manages our incubation center and looks after us all keeps us on the straight and narrow uh, from an admin perspective but we don't deal with clients individually typically it's all co-consulting so we would work with clients on a team basis one or two consultants from the big would work in on each client specifically bringing in the expertise that's needed as required 
It seems that the organisation has a very broad base of skills that can certainly assist any business, big or small, that would come to you looking for specific advice. Yeah, certainly we try to cover the big bases. Big, the big bases would be the, the sales and marketing, the finance, the strategy, the IT. IT comes into every business now on the technology side of things. So we like to think we cover all, all the bases. And if we don't have the expertise in-house, we know where to get it externally as well. At what stage are you finding that business people are coming to you at? Is it prior to them setting up a business or is it a growth stage or is it, we'll say, for instance, where problems arise in their own business? Again, the answer to that, Carol, is all of the above. The, we get a wide variety of people. Some people come in with a concept and so we have to take them through the process I outlined earlier. Uh, we work a lot with SMEs, as I said, um, typically some Enterprise Board clients or Enterprise Ireland clients that have a specific goal in mind, be that funding or looking at a new market. And, and sometimes we do come in and, and troubleshoot if a company has a specific uh, area uh, that they need addressing at a particular time. So any business at any stage uh, of development is welcome to contact the BIC. And finally, I'd just like you to provide our listeners with uh, information in relation to contact details for CBIC. Uh, well, our uh, contact primarily would be the website initially. Let's uh, cbic.ie, that's S E bic.ie dot ie. We are based in Waterford, but we cover the whole southeast region. Our phone number is 051-356-300 or if you want to contact me directly, it's a shine a s h i n e at cbic s e b i c dot ie. You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with thanks to Wexford Insurances. Wexford Insurances, number one for business insurance in County Wexford.